What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lucas Jensen and I am the owner and founder of Ford Media Marketing, which is the leading and the go-to marketing agency for painting businesses that is around. So earlier this year, which was in roughly February of 2024, I had the amazing opportunity of speaking at Liftoff 2024, which was essentially an online event for contractors, one of the biggest one that's around today, uh, which was created by my good buddy, Tanner Mullen. So Tanner, if you don't know him, he is an amazing dude uh, with a ton of value to share with everyone. And he's always bringing the community together. So he owns a painting business in Florida, Ocala called Premium Painting, who is of course, one of our clients. And he also owns Drip Jobs, which is the leading CRM for contractors that's around today. Now at Liftoff, I really, really brought the heat. I shared the top five Facebook ad secrets that'll allow anybody that watches the video to dominate their local market. So with that being said, I really hope you enjoy. And here is the replay of Liftoff 2024. So today's topic is how to dominate your local market in 2024 with these five wildly profitable Facebook ad secrets. So by the end of this presentation, my goal for you is to help flood your painting business with leads. Okay. And I'm also going to show you how to dominate your local market in 2024. So a quick little backstory about me is I run a marketing agency specifically for painters called Ford Media Marketing. You may have seen my name a few times in the painting contractors group, that little stud there with the, the red profile picture. Uh, you may be heard me on a podcast or live training that I was featured in with, you know, Tanner, with Mike, with the Paint Ed podcast, a lot of podcasts going out recently. Uh, you may have seen many of my ads or just one of my ads in the, in the last like 12 months, 18 months or so. And uh, if you have, you know, you're in good, in good company here because there's that old saying that goes, you never trust a dentist with bad teeth. So if you see my ads, <laughs> then you know, you know, you're in good company. So uh, also you may have heard about us from one of my many, many, many clients. But uh, also I told Tanner that I'm going to do whatever it takes to promote Liftoff 2024. So my commitment was to him was uh, I'm throwing it on all platforms. Okay. So maybe you saw Liftoff 2024 on my Tinder profile. We're advertising everywhere, baby. <laughs> Regardless of how you heard about me or why you're here, I'm grateful to have your time and attention today. So my commitment to you is to maximize the return on investment because your time is easily the most expensive currency that there is today, right? So I want to maximize that return on investment that you get from the time you spend with me here today by packing this presentation with value. And like I said, helping you flood your sales pipeline with leads and outlining exactly how you're going to dominate your local market in 2024. So here's a quick little backstory about me. Just last year in 2023, my team and I successfully added over $4.3 million in direct new sales for our clients. And we successfully accomplished this solely through running Facebook ads. So here's how our 2023 looked in like a little Spotify recap kind of situation. So we spent $126,000 on behalf of our client on Facebook ads. That generated over $4.3 million in direct sales, which resulted in a 34.12x return on ad spend, which essentially that means that for every $1 that our clients invested into Facebook ads, they made over $34 back in direct new sales. Could you just imagine that? Like a vetting machine where you put $1 in and it spits out $34 back. I don't know about you, but I'd be running to the bank and just load that baby up. So, <laughs> uh, and I say direct because with business, it's typically never a one plus one equals two type of situation because one sale can easily translate into multiple referrals. And those referrals turn into even more referrals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why I say direct new sales, because those are tracked, right? We put this ad out, this got this lead, that lead converted to that sale. But I guarantee that the $4.3 million that we generated for our clients last year in direct new sales, it did not just stop there. It could be 5 million or 6 million or 7 million that can be di directly attributed to those initial leads that we got. Who knows? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not taking credit, like absolutely no credit whatsoever for those referrals. That's on you guys to do the production. You guys nailed it. But I know that it couldn't have happened without first getting that initial new sale. So like I said, one plus one does not equal two. One plus one ultimately in business equals whatever you want it to be but that's not the purpose of my presentation here today. My purpose of this presentation is to show you how to dominate your local market in 2024. And I'm gonna give you our five, five wildly profitable Facebook ad secrets that allowed us to add $4.3 million in direct new sales for our clients in 2023. So 
This is, well, as Tanner just shared a screen, I mean, we're not stopping anyway there, but this is the exact same strategy that booked our client Tanner. I put a nice little heart around him. Uh, over $50,000 in the first 30 days of us launching. This is again, the exact same strategy that booked one of our other clients, Phil, over $92,000 in the first 21 days. This is our all-time record, by the way. First three weeks, 21 days, we spent, I think it was $394 on ads and he booked 92K from it, which is nuts. Uh, this is the same strategy that booked another one of our clients over $75,000 in the first 30 days. And this one is so impressive because he came to us, he started his business, I think in August and we took him on in September. And since then we've actually added, I think like close to 250,000 or $300,000 for a brand new business, just boots on ground. And, uh, I always say he kind of looks like the Nashville Tommy Shelby, but, uh, yeah, so that's Ryan. So 75 K in the first 30 days. Uh, and this is. Spencer, our good old buddy, buddy Spencer, who's so active in the industry. I'm sure we all know him. Uh, in the last 24 hours, we got him five estimates and three new leads just from Facebook. And this is the same strategy that got Damien over $27,000 booked in just this first week of January. Okay. So I could go on and on, but here's a list of a bunch of other success stories from our other clients that you just screenshot or pause or rewatch the recording, whatever you want to do. But yeah, all this to say, all this was possible because of these five closely held, wildly profitable Facebook ad secrets. So if you're running a painting business right now and you're tired of buying and sharing leads with all your competitors, you're tired of relying on word of mouth and referrals to grow your business, or you just want to get more bang for your buck with your Facebook ads, then listen up because I'm about to share the secrets with you in this presentation here today. And at the end, I'm even going to make you an offer so good that you'd be willing to club a baby seal in order to get it. Just look how cute he is. And uh, I'm just kidding, guys. Like, I hope PETA doesn't come and break down my door after this presentation, but I'm kind of kidding. Anyways, let's jump in. But first, I know what you're probably thinking. Lucas, I want to get away from price shoppers and tire kickers aren't Facebook ads notorious for getting those. But to be honest, the quality of the leads that you get is in direct relation to the quality of the ads that you put out. Let's read that again, okay? The quality of the leads that you get is in direct relation to the quality of the ads that you put out. So if you're putting out low quality stuff, then that's the exact type of lead that you're going to get, period. Similarly, if you're out knocking on doors in a low income area with a crappy sales pitch, what type of leads do you really think you'll get? I'll tell you right now, it probably won't be someone with that $20,000 budget for an exterior paint job. And how do I know that? Because you don't go fishing in a pond full of bass and expect to catch a tuna. But then on the contrary, if you're out there pounding the pavement in a gated community that only has homes over a million dollars plus, and you have a wicked sales pitch, I guarantee you'll get much, you'll get much better leads versus doing that in the low income area. Similarly, if you launch ads that stop the scroll, which is the point of Facebook ads, right? Calls out your target audience, hooks them in, builds their trust and gets them to take action. Then I guarantee you'll get flooded with referral quality leads. So with that being said, are you ready to dive in? Let's drop some ones in the chat. Let's drop some ones in the chat. I want to see that blow up. Awesome. Cool. Let's get started. So secret number one is you got to nail your targeting. All right. Nailing your targeting is so important because A, you don't want to lead from a completely different state slash province and B, you don't want to lead that can't afford your services. So Lucas, how can I prevent that from happening? Great question. First of all, let me tell you, <laughs> when you launch ads, you got to make sure to be specific about who, what, and where you are targeting. I've broken it down to five extremely important factors. Number one is the geo location. It would be pretty hard to scale your painting company in Florida if you kept getting leads in Iowa. Am I right? We found the sweet spot lies anywhere between a three to 10 mile radius around your city and town, depending on the population size, of course. And also it's better to go a little bit more narrow with your geo targeting because your callouts are a little bit less effective when they're more general and broad, right? So for example, like with all other variables, the same, like all of the exact same targeting, uh, the demographics, the psychographics, the copy, the creatives, everything else is the exact same. But the only variable is you're running ads that say, Hey, Florida homeowners, that'll be much less effective than if you, you know, drop the radius and you just called out, Hey, winter park homeowners as a headline call out, you know, keep in mind, you gotta be of course in winter park homeowner, or you gotta be living in winter park or that's your area of operation. Otherwise. You know, ads might not work very well, but you get what I mean. So the old way is, you know, dropping a pin around your area. So for example, I chose Orlando here. So the old way is you just drop a 10 mile pin around Orlando and just hope for the best. This is the new way. Okay. 
So we dropped three mile radiuses around Winter Park, along with multiple ads targeting other surrounding neighborhoods. So we have one ad running for Winter Park homeowners. Then we have another one for Orlo Vista and another one for Oviedo, et cetera, et cetera. So we found the most success in our geotargeting is when we go more narrow with multiple small radiuses dropped, AKA target multiple specific towns or neighborhoods rather than general states or cities. Number two is the age distribution. This one's really interesting. We found the most success with our ads when targeting the ages 35 to 64, 35 at the minimum, because I don't know about you guys, but I don't know too many 18 year olds who can buy a house, <laughs> let alone afford your painting services. If you know one, that, that that's awesome, but they're diamond a dozen, I'll tell you that. And 64 at the maximum because Facebook sets a cap at 65 plus, which means that a 90 year old man could be seeing your ad who likely won't convert most of the time, right? So we kind of want to exclude them a little bit. <laughs> so 64 at the maximum. And yeah, so 35, 64, that's a sweet spot. Thirdly is gender distribution. This one is, this one's really, really interesting. So we ran a test targeting men only versus women only with all other variables the same. And here's what we found. Targeting women only had a 23% increase in cost per lead compared to men. But we also saw 47% increase in the lead to estimate ratios when targeting women only. Meaning by targeting specifically women, our clients were able to get in front of 47% more customers than men, which resulted in higher booking amounts and a better return on ad spend. So I'd suggest you try running a women only targeting campaign and then compare the results yourself. Number four is lookalike audience. So with Facebook, you can download a list of past clients, leads, et cetera, and upload it so that your ads can start being shown to an audience that is similar or even bigger than the list that you provide. That way you're hitting the social media feeds of people that are much more likely to buy slash show interest in your painting services and not, you know, Joe Blow with a $500, $500 uh, budget. So this will result in more leads, better leads, cheaper leads, and more money booked from your ads, which ultimately means more success. And lastly, number five is retargeting. This is done through a pixel. Okay. So firstly, what is a pixel? What a pixel does is allows you to retarget website visitors, AKA people that already showed interest in your company before. So who here has gone to a website before? And then all of a sudden they're being bombarded with that company's ads. Like you, you go on, you know, Craigslist and you search a BMW or something. And then boom, BMWs are just being hit all over your social media feed. And you're like, what the can Zuckerberg is Zuckerberg stalking me, you know? So who here has done that? Awesome. So if you answer no, or you just didn't reply at all, then I promise by the end of the day, you'll start seeing mine. If you go to my website for media marketing.com, that's FWD media marketing.com, test it out, go to my website, and you'll start being hit with my many, many ads. Okay. So that's a pixel. So this will allow you to continuously stay top of mind for traffic, traffic up until the point where they convert and become a lead and further a client. So to recap, secret number one is to nail your targeting. Secret number two is you need captivating creatives. The creative refers to the images slash videos shown in your ads. The creative alone will either lead to your ad succeeding or flopping horribly. <laughs> creative is king. So the creative you use is easily one of the most crucial aspects of your Facebook ad. And you could, you could ask Tanner too, like, we test, them, we test so many different creatives out on them. <laughs> uh, so sometimes it's not where you're advertising that attracts better leads over others. It's actually what you're advertising that attracts better leads over others. Because at the end of the day, you promote what you permit. And that doesn't go just for Facebook as that's ultimately for any aspect of your business. So what do I mean by that? When it comes to Facebook ads, if you permit the use of bad creatives, then you'll promote bad leads to enter into your sales pipeline. You promote what you permit. So if you want to promote good quality leads entering into your sales pipeline, you need to permit the use of good creatives. Your creatives need to be so attention grabbing that it'll get a cold audience who has no idea who the heck you are to stop scrolling and feel enough urgency and trust to engage with your ad. So I want to play a little game here. Examples of ads that are no bueno. Okay. So before we jump in, this is, these are actual ads that I saw. So, uh, if you, if the people that launch these ads are in the, in the presentation, I'm sorry on, I'm sorry, uh, in advance, but exhibit A, <laughs> we got this, this gem right here. Okay. Which is just a blue screen with some text on it. All right. No bueno. So I'm going to, I'm going to 
I want to actually ask some Q and A's quick, quick. So what do you guys think is wrong with this exact creative? I want to hear you guys' thoughts. Yeah. Too much blue, no call to action, attracting cost-based customers. Yeah. <laughs> Someone says beautiful. That's funny. Hard to read. Yeah, exactly. You guys get the hang of it. So what I see in this ad is it's so bland. It's just someone just screenshotted a blue and just wrote some stuff on an Instagram story and launched it out. And the call to action is visit Instagram profile. There's no like <laughs> lead capture or anything. It's just like, hey guys, go check out my Instagram. Okay. I wouldn't put money behind this one. Um, exhibit B. This one, this one right here is just, uh, doesn't need too much explanation, but I'm sure you know where I'm going with this one. So we'll just go ahead and move on, but ultimately no bueno. Okay. <laughs> Secret number three is lead destination. Meaning what is the actual objective to launching ads and where do you want to send your engaged audience? Are you trying to get them to like your page, watch a video, go to your Instagram profile? What do you, what do you want them to do? No, <laughs> you want leads. Okay. Since you want leads, we recommend one of two options here. A, having them fill out a lead form, right? So they got the ad right here in the middle that drives people that click it to a lead form where they just submit and then you, you can set up automations to send it to drip jobs, et cetera, right? So that's option A. Option B is to direct them to the inbox and spark an automated combo with them. So from ad to conversation and then zap it to drip jobs. Lead forms are typically lower quality, but higher volume. Message leads are typically higher quality, but have a higher cost per lead. All in all, both of them can work very, very, very well. Secret number four is to track your numbers. As we saw in Maggie's presentation, she had a full spreadsheet for every single number in her business, right? That's why she's doing $9 million because she's tracking her numbers. Probably a lot more than just tracking the numbers. There's a lot more that goes into it, obviously, but it's a start, right? You got to track your numbers. So now the question is, is how much should I be spending on Facebook ads and how do I even know if my ads are successful? Great question. So of course, there's a few factors at play. What services are you pushing? What area are you targeting? What's your average job cost? What season are we in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And although those are very important variables, here's what we typically look at when auditing a client's past Facebook ads performance. Number one is budget. So how much are they spending on Facebook ads? Number two is destination. Where are they sending the traffic? Are you trying to get link clicks? Are you sending them to a form? Are you trying to get calls? What are you trying to do with the, with the ads? Number three is the cost per lead. So what's the actual cost to acquire a lead? Number four is conversions. So what's the lead to estimate ratio? And number five is the duration. So how long have the ads actually been running? So once we establish these, we compare them to our baselines. And again, if you don't know your numbers, then I highly, highly, highly recommend you start tracking them. Because remember, what you track improves, okay? So for example, if you're trying to lose weight, you track your calories, right? Similarly, if you're trying to have high converting Facebook ads, then either you or your agency should constantly be tracking them and being held accountable with reporting so you can always be improving. So here are our baselines. And if these numbers are not met, then we consider the Facebook ads to be underperforming. So number one is budget. So we recommend at least $30 a day for ad spends on Facebook at the minimum. Anything less is you're kind of uh, dog fighting over, over budget there. Number two is we recommend lead forms or messenger as the traffic destination. Number three is the cost per lead. So you should not be paying anywhere over $50 per lead. The main component here is the season you're running the ads in and the area you're running them, right? Winter and heavily populated areas often result in a higher cost per lead. For example, if you're running ads in an area that has a population of 25,000, you'll probably have a lower cost per lead than if you launch the exact same ads in New York City with a population of, I don't know how many million, but you, it'll be hard to compete for that, okay? Number four is conversions. Your ad should be converting one of three leads into an estimate, a 33% conversion rate, and you should be converting at least one of two estimates into a jobs booked uh, at the bare minimum. So if you aren't hitting those conversions, your ads need to be improved. Number five, duration. Although we do believe in testing quick and emotionless, Facebook sometimes does take time to start showing ads to the right people through the algorithm. It's like a learning phase, right? So usually uh, this will result in higher cost per lead at the start and then averages out you know, further more, right? So also if your ads have been running for too long, then they enter into creative fatigue, right? Which is a high frequency, meaning too many people have seen your ads too many times, right? 
and this will increase your cost per lead because they're like, oh, I've seen that ad like a hundred times in the last two months. You know what I mean? So high frequency is no bueno. So if you're running Facebook ads, these are the five KPIs we look at when auditing, not just our clients, previous Facebook ads, but also the ads that our team launches for our clients. And if your ads are underperforming, it will likely always be due to one of those five metrics. So with that being said, if you aren't already, then you really need to start tracking your numbers because what you track improves. So track your numbers. <laughs> Lastly, secret number five. Are you guys liking this, by the way? Should I keep going? Drop some, drop some emojis in the chat if you're liking this. <laughs> awesome. Not quite emojis, but we're getting yeses. So okay. <laughs> we'll continue. We'll keep pushing. All right. So speed to lead. So there's a saying that goes, fortune favors the follow-up. And that couldn't be more true. There's a case study that shows that 78% of customers purchase from the first business that responds to them. Okay. 78%. That's nuts. And that same study shows that sales conversions are 391% higher when follow-ups are done within the first minute. So that just goes to show how truly important the follow-up really is for you. Because even if you check off the first four items, right, you, you nail the targeting, the creatives are on point, you got the right destination set up and all the KPIs are being met. If you're taking two days to get back to a lead, your competition might've just beaten you to a punch, all right? So even if it takes you two hours to get back to them, you can still be coming in second. And not to quote Ricky Bobby here, but if you ain't first, you're last. <laughs> so enter automations. That's why whenever we onboard clients, we always push them to drip jobs. Shout out to Tanner Mullen over here. Uh, because the incident automated follow-ups allows us to get higher conversion rates for our clients. And with the higher conversion rates, that means more jobs booked, which means our ads perform even better i.e. more moolah in your pockets. So there you have it. If you want to have highly successful and wildly profitable Facebook ads for your painting business, here are the five secrets. All right. Secret number one, you got to nail your targeting. Secret two, you got to have captivating creatives. Number three, you got to have the right lead destinations. Don't just send people to an Instagram profile. Okay. Number four, you got to track your numbers. And number five, you got to have speed to lead. Boom. Boom. Man, I knew you delivered. So I loaded up the chat, go check out what he's got to offer. You get a content toolkit that pretty much outlines a lot of what was discussed today. And honestly, if you thought that presentation was valuable, we have an even bigger webinar coming up at the end of this month on July 30th and July 31st called Contractor Impact. A two day online event with 20 speakers, July 30th, July 31st, completely 100% free. So if you're in the home service industry, Highly, highly recommend that you come. It's completely 100% free. All you're gonna do is click the link below. There's gonna be a ton of big names there participating, um, speaking such as myself, Tom Reber, Tommy Mello, Andy Elliott, Joel Mercado. So many amazing speakers are gonna be there and just drop in so much value and just bring in the heat. So again, July 30th, July 31st. If you wanna watch that, that's gonna be, the link is right below. Completely free, sign up, and I'll see you guys there. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy. And if you're interested in having my team and I run your Facebook ads for you and help you scale your painting business to get more leads and sales, the link is going to be right below. It is a free consultation call. And on that call, we're going to help you get more direction and clarity on how you can meet your business goals this year. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.